What did we want? You ready to praise them? So let's jump in and let's give them praise. Let's give them thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? What do you need prophesied that you need that you want to thank God for? Thank you, Lord, for healing, for chains broken this morning. So let's let's give a shout of glory, a shout of joy. Yeah.
kept hearing a few things this morning. Am I not the one who parted the Red Sea? Am I not the one who calmed the raging sea? Am I not the one who said, let there be light and there was light? And we easily look at those big things and we go, God, you are great. You are the great I am and so capable of doing all those things. But then we're like, my ankle hurts. I don't know if you can do that, God. That's not the small things and you're the great I am. God is in the big and he is in the little miracles. And whatever you stand in need of today, financial, your pinky hurt, your ankle hurts. A salvation, great, big, or small, he's the God of it all. He wants to heal you today. He wants to give you your miracle that you stand in need of today. The great I am is here. You make the move forward. I don't know if it's a step out of your seat and you come to the altar. I don't know if it's you ask somebody to lay hands on you and pray for you. But make the first move because he's here. Just respond to that.
to raise your hand so that you can. What these are is this is a prayer card for our call to all. And uh, the call to all is um, a group of churches that meet down in the city park the 12th through the 14th of August. And um, we are, our theme is freedom. I said freedom. So isn't it kind of interesting that the theme up here is freedom? Now, the reason that we get to have the theme down there be freedom is because um, I picked it. <laughs> and it comes from here. This is Jesus when he first comes back out of the wilderness and he, and he speaks uh, in his hometown of Nazareth and, uh, and here's what, at the synagogue and here's what he writes or here's what he reads out of Isaiah. And this is from the Passion Translation. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to be hope for the poor. Yes. Friday night, we are going to be celebrating and we are going to be hearing a sermon about hope for the poor. And then, um, and that's Pastor Bart at Temple Hill Baptist. And then it says that um, healing for the brokenhearted. And uh, that will be on Saturday night. And that's Pastor Markham from Revival Center. And new, new Eyes for the Blind, and that's Pastor Pete Shafsma uh, from Living Light. And then on Sunday evening, to preach to prisoners, you are set free. And that message will come from Pastor Dave McMahon. And, uh, and it is going to be a great, great weekend. Now, one of the things that we are, are incorporating, we're doing in this Freedom Camp is we're believing that as we walk in freedom and as we pray for freedom 
that that's going to be something that is going to be absolutely pouring down into our community because we need freedom. I don't know about you, but during this, this week, I, I've had a few areas of my own life, my own heart, that have been identified by the Holy Spirit as areas that still needed freedom. And uh, in fact, if you've, if you've been dealing with the same problem for the, for the longest of times and you keep circling back to it, chances are you've never really got free from it. And God isn't giving up on setting you free. Amen. 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 So this call to all prayer card is, is our prayer uh, between now and then. And I encourage you every day to take this card and pray through this card, the prayer prompts. And uh, I think that you'll be glad that you did. And um, it, it's just going to be a wonderful season down there in the park. Now at this time we're going to go ahead and have our, our, our communion. And I want to have our folks serve you. We do communion every week here at Revival Center um, because Jesus said, um, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Well, I don't know why we would not want to remember him every time we got together. And so, because he is the focus. And so they're going to serve you today and uh, make sure that um, we are prepared uh, for that and uh, getting ready. Because what Jesus came to do is he came to set captives free. And um, when we talk about the price that he paid on the cross when he allowed his body to be broken. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, it says uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. That's the things you did on purpose and you knew was wrong. How many of you have ever done something you knew it was wrong and did it anyway? Okay, we've got mostly honest people. <clears throat> the rest of you have just done something wrong and knew it was wrong. Okay. All right. <laughs> Because we've all done something wrong on purpose. That's a transgression. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, bruising is internal bleeding. How many of you have ever been bruised? And it's under the skin and it's internal bleeding. It's an internal problem. Jesus was bruised for our internal problems, our iniquities. And iniquity is that bend maybe in your family line or generations where you have had a tendency towards something that, uh, that was not good. It wasn't a good thing. And he was bruised for that. So that, listen, you could be the first one in your generation to be free from the curse that your family has carried. You could be the first one. And when you're the first one, guess what? You're not the last one. Because you could start something that is absolutely tremendous and there can be freedom come. How many of you are the first Christian in your generation? Anybody here, you are the first Christian in your family generation? Gene Mansfield, anybody else? Dave, Mike, first Christian in your generation. You know, that's an incredible thing because you have an opportunity now to start something that is different. Roger, and, and look at your family, Roger, what God has done in your family. Isn't that incredible? First Christian, yeah, back there, Ray. First Christian, and, and, and when you're the first Christian in your generation, the iniquity can stop with you. Hello? Because it stops from what Jesus did on the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. I really believe that that passage is talking there about the crown of thorns that Jesus bore on his head was for our peace. And you can walk in peace because he bore the pain of, of, the, uh, of the thorns into his crown or into his head. And, um, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. And so thankful for the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for waiting for me, Jeff. He was just waiting, circling around, wondering when I was going to take this stuff. But um, that's what was paid for you. Now, here's the thing. You can receive salvation and never experience the other things. Because each thing that Jesus paid for on the cross is received by faith. And so you know what? There are many Christians who... Who don't, they, they've never believed in faith for healing, and so they haven't experienced it. Or they haven't seen a stop in the generational things, because they haven't believed for it. Everything we receive from the Lord, we receive by faith. So today, as we receive the bread and the cup, we are going to receive those things by faith, okay? Lord, we thank you for what you did on the cross. We thank you for the price that you paid, and we receive everything that you paid for in your precious name we pray. Amen. You can receive the bread and the cup.
Praise the Lord. God is so good, isn't he? Yes. Now, we want to give you a little bit of understanding of what's going to happen in the rest of this service. Of course, we don't know all that's going to happen because we have no idea what's going to happen when the word is preached and the responses. We have no idea what there. But one of the things that we are going to do at, at the conclusion or at the end of our service is we are going to um, baptize those who want to be baptized. If you are here and you wanted to be baptized and you haven't signed up, you can still let us know. We have a shirt for you. This is a great shirt. This is the shirt. You won't have my shirt, but this is the shirt you'll have. And it says, dunked on the spot. All right? It says, dunked on the spot. So, um, you know, you can, uh, you can do that. And we're going to baptize you right over here in this hot tub. And no, you cannot stay in there later for... No. Actually, Pastor Scott, he said to me, he said, do you want me to turn the bubbles on? In fact, he even said, do you want to sit in the hot tub during the service? I thought to myself, that wouldn't be so bad. You know, maybe more people get baptized on a regular basis if we had a hot tub that uh, did that. So that's, that's pretty cool. But, uh, no, but if you want to be baptized... The, the one thing that we need is we need to be able to know what size shirt you have, you need, so that we can get you a shirt and you can be baptized at the end, at the conclusion of this service. And then after that, we're going to move the chairs and we're going to set up tables and we're going to have a time of fellowship and eating. We have some great <clears throat> chefs out there waving us, guys out there that are working. taking care of the corn and they're doing some they're going to do some hot dogs and some hamburgers and we're going to have a great time of fellowship as we uh, conclude this uh, this uh, freedom camp so you'll be free to eat everything that we have okay if we got it you can eat it if we run out you can go to McDonald's okay that's kind of how it works all right but um, we just are so thankful this morning if you would like to give an offering to Revival Center we appreciate your faithful giving. And there are four ways to give at Revival Center. We have some folks that mail in, especially those that watch us online. They uh, they join with us online. They mail theirs in. And you can mail it in to P.O. Box 667-49601. And uh, we will get it and, um, and uh, through the Postal Service. Another way that you can give is uh, by getting online on our website. And uh, you can see that num that website up there. And then, um, then we also have text to give, which is 810-202-0605. And you can give that way. Or you can give in an offering envelope. If you need an envelope this morning, we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to have one. And you can put in an offering there. And that way we can also uh, make sure that you get a receipt. So we've got some hands up. So... If, um, if our ushers can help those folks that have their hands up, it would be absolutely great to do so. Amen. I hope that you've been enjoying having uh, our services in a tent, because we're going to be in this tent for a minute. Okay, just want you to know. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful time of year to be outside. Now, I had a number of years ago, we were actually doing eight weeks on the hill on purpose, even though we had a building. And I had one person come up to me and they said, about probably week four, they said, when you get back in the building, let me know. Because there's a perfectly good building down there and we're not using it. And uh, I said, yeah, there's perfectly beautiful weather out here and we're using that. And uh, so we want, to, we want to make sure that, uh, now we don't have that building down there anymore. It disappeared at one point in time. And, um, and it did not get raptured, I can tell you that. But uh, I want you to know that uh, this is a great place to worship the Lord, and especially this time of year. And uh, we want to make sure that you're welcome and come to that. If you would like to give, we want to uh, go ahead and have our usher serve you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give today. And we give as cheerful givers and as unto you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, last night... Last night, uh, Pastor David Ferranti gave us a great word from the Lord and um, told us a little bit about his story, uh, some of the testimonies from his life. And um, I was so thankful uh, to hear uh, some of the stories that he told because they told 
of what happens when you do the right thing at the right time. When you do the right thing at the right time, God does some amazing things through you. And we've been talking a lot of, uh, about divine appointments and divine assignments up here. And it just kind of fit right in with that too, Pastor Dave. And we want you to come and just share the word of God. Feel free because it is freedom care. Good morning again. It is good to be with you. I uh, uh, I couldn't guess the pastor's age. He was up here dancing so much. I thought, my goodness, he must be 25. And uh, at, least. at least. But uh, would you stand with me as we read God's word? I want to just read this morning the scriptures and then we're going to talk about them together. Listen to this. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Can you say cross over to the other side? Cross over to the other side. Now when they had left uh, the multitude, they took along uh, they took along in a boat as he was, and other little boats were with him also. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was ready, already filling. But he was in the stem, uh, asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he rose, rebuked the wind, said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it uh, that you have no faith? Do you have a seat, please? This morning, I want to talk to you uh, briefly um, about the Sea of Galilee. The, South, the Sea of Galilee is known for a place that storms come up suddenly. This is no joke. Me and my wife and a group of people went to Israel, and we took a boat across the Sea of Galilee. And sure enough, I'm reading this passage. And when I'm reading the passage, it was a beautiful day, just like this. And all of a sudden, a storm came up, just like, I'm reading the scriptures. And like, look, it's really happening right now. You, you need to understand that when Jesus talked to the disciples, and he said, let's cross over to the other side, he knew that they were going to go through some stuff. But he was there in the midst of them. Amen. He was there with them to not only uh, help them, but to be there and be able to uh, uh, deal with the storm that was at hand. Any chess players in here? Anybody ever play chess? All right, a few of you play chess. A couple guys were playing chess. And uh, they were getting out near to the end. And the one guy said, checkmate. And uh, the guy goes, oh. He looked for a few more minutes. And he couldn't believe it. He said, wait a minute. He said, wait a second. He said, the king has one more move. See, he had thought he lost. But he recognized that his king had another move. Amen. What we have to do by faith is to believe. Everybody say with me, the king, the king has one more move. Has one more move. Now check this out. It's been said that there are storms that come affecting your families, your flesh, and your finances. Paul was shipwrecked and bitten by a snake. But the king had one more move. You remember the story? Everybody say, the king had one more move. The king had one more move. Peter cut off the ear of a servant of the high priest, and the, and the, and the king had one more move and put his ear back on his head. Yeah. A little boy gave Jesus five loaves and two fishes, but the king had one more move. I think you get where this is going tonight. The king Jesus is not limited by time or space, and he is able to do for you, listen, what you are unable to do for yourself. Yes. But it requires that we, we exercise our faith. Faith is a, is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. A man had a legion of demons, but the king had one more move and delivered those, uh, those demons. Lazarus had a very bad day and died, but the king had one more move. Are you with me so far? Well. The king has one more move. He's not limited by time or space. Jesus went to the cross. He died. They thought it was over. But the king had one more move. There's three things that happen in the storms of our life. Number one, there's the force of the storm. There's the fear that comes along with the storm. And then there's faith during the storm. And I want to talk to you real quickly about the force. In verse 35 and 37 says, There were many forces to be reckoned with when the storms come. That storm had to be uh, uh, lightning, wind. It would have been uh, flooding waters. I heard on Sunday there was a little water in here. They are trying to get the water out uh, before service started last week. 
See, we, we, we can't control what happens, but we can control, listen, how we trust Him. Wow. How we believe Him. How we anticipate the inevitable. God's supernatural power to work in and through us so that we can accomplish His purpose. It's not about what I can do in my own strength. It's, the Bible said in Zechariah 4, 6, it's not by power, by might, but by my spirit. To as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the children of God. So God's people have to not work on building their flesh up. They've got to work on crucifying the flesh so that they can be led by the Spirit. And when you're led by the Spirit, there's nothing impossible for you. Now, a lot of people say, well, Pastor Dave, you know, I can just name it and claim it and say whatever I want. No, that's, that's your flesh. Your flesh can say whatever it wants, but you've got to be willing, listen, to listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And when you come in agreement with the Holy Spirit and say what He prompts you to say, yeah. now anything can be done, and He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Spiritually, there are forces as well. Let's take a look at some of these. The force of the storm may discourage you. Everybody say discourage you. Discourage. When a storm comes, it's very easy to come under discouragement. Because you don't know where you're going. You don't know how God's going to provide. You don't know what God's going to do. And so you come under the discouragement at times. When the winds of adversity begin to blow, discouragement can certainly come. I've often found myself discouraged when in the midst of the storm. The disciples were certainly discouraged in thinking that Jesus was asleep. And did not care about the storm. Likewise, as you're going through your storms, the devil will whisper that the Lord is nowhere to be found. But you have to remember, the king has one more move. The force of the storm may drain you. This is what we've got to pray for our pastors about. You know, we, we have a church. We've got a group of people moving. We're affecting the community. But a fire comes and, and takes the building down. And it's not only that the discouragement we can overcome, but now we've got to deal with this, the draining of, of, of what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? How is it going to happen? How are all the pieces going to come in? And all of a sudden, you begin to recognize that the, the force of the storm can drain you. The force of the storm can, can weigh heavy on us. And then finally, if you allow it, the force of the storm can defeat you. I've seen lots of good people who started out strong in the Lord get defeated and taken out. Because they let the, the storm discourage them, they let it drain them, and then they literally let it overcome them. And they begin to focus more on the problem than they focused on the answer. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. But I like what our sister said earlier. You know, you've got to make the move. You've got to make the step. And when I've been uh, going through a storm, I've got to remember that the king has one more move. Yes, he does. He's not limited to me being able to figure it out uh, because it will try to discourage me. It will try to drain me. It will try to defeat me. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So I began to say to myself in the midst of a storm, the king has one more move. Yeah. God's at work in your life, and when you think you're at the end of your situation, and there's no breakthrough, it's not going to happen, we're not going to make it, we're not going to get up the hill, you begin, some of you are afraid to come up this hill. Well. Park my car down here, give me a ride. Listen, you're, you, you could make it. But your mind told you you couldn't make it. Of course, I had a truck, I didn't even think twice about it. I, had a big truck. I, I just put it in four-wheel drive if I had to, and I'd go. But when I'm thinking about this, this place that you guys are at, and it's such a privilege to be here with your pastor, uh, your pastors, your team, because I know that not only is God working in, in, in and through all this, but I know that the king has one more move. Yes, he does. The force of the storm will determine you. I was told many years ago that under the best lumber for furniture will be found up in the cold mountains where the winds are blowing regularly, where the pressures are on. Uh, likewise, some of the strongest people that I've met are those who've constantly been exposed to the storms of life. I still remember uh, my drill sergeant in uh, uh, New Jersey when I was there at uh, Fort Dix. Uh, that they said, here's what he said. He said, gentlemen, we're going to put you through the, 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 the everything we can that will defeat you. And sure enough, they put us in a tent in the middle of winter. And they told us we had to find our way home, dropped us off in the middle of no place. One situation after the other to try to defeat us. And yet, for those who believe in Christ, who believe in the, resur the resurrection power of Jesus, the king has one more move. What's impossible for you? What, what seems too difficult for you? What seems challenging to you? You've got to continue to believe that the king has one more move. 
The second thing I want you to know this morning, not only can the, the storms come, but now I want you to realize that fears come during the storm. Have you ever noticed that? Fear of, 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 of not having what I need. Last Yesterday, if you were here, I said this. I said that real freedom takes real commitment. Right. Everyone wants freedom. Everyone wants to get out of the boat. Actually, no one wants to get out of the boat, but they want to walk on the water. And all of a sudden, you begin to recognize that God's, God's going to call me to do some great things to affect our world. It's not going to come easy. Because I've got to continue to believe and renew my mind that the king has one more move. Amen. There's a natural fear that comes with storms of life. These disciples were afraid because they were not trusting. They forgot that the Lord said, let us pass to the other side. God said in that passage, God is going to, he's going to take us to the other side. But what they did is they looked at the storm. They looked at the problem. They looked at their situation. And they did not have deep on the inside of them a faith that said, the king has one more move. Every time you go through a battle, every time you go through a situation, every time the wife brings the paper home and says, oh, these are the divorce papers, what you and I got to begin to say is, I see what that says, but what does God say? Because I'm going to believe that the king has one more move. And what seems to be the problem may not be the problem because the real problem, listen, are people who have gotten away from God, who've, who've moved away from trusting. God wants to heal us. We heard that this morning. What's stopping us from pursuing God? It's easy to go to the medicine cabinet. Nothing wrong with medicine. I understand that. But when it's the first place we go, rather than going to Jesus first, then we've got to begin to ask ourselves, am I seeking him first so that God can reveal to me what he needs to reveal to me, and then I'll be able to deal with whatever situation was happening? It was because of unbelief. They were afraid of the potential dangers. When the Lord said, peace be still, he was using a word that is used to rebuke demons. It was though he was saying this, be muzzled. That's right. He was saying, be muzzled, devil. Shut up, because my people are going to be able to come through anything that comes at them. We were a few months ago, we, here at the leadership retreat, uh, leadership meeting that we had down in the building, uh, one of the coolest things happened, you guys wrote down this decree and declared this, this stuff as an apostolic, powerful, powerhouse church, doing great things for the kingdom. And, and we took it back and we said, you know what? We got the same DNA in them. I'm going to take that and put, I'm going to put Bay Valley in that thing. All right. And then we read that to everybody. We said, you know what? We're part of something much bigger than ourselves. Well, and all of a sudden, you began to realize, I come up here two months later and the church is gone. Is it possible that when you and I get into a position where we're actually taking ground for the Lord, that we're trying to take territory away from the enemy, that actually he may uh, bring a few things at us, Try to, try to take us out, try to take the pastor out, try to take you out, try to take your marriage out, try to take your finances away, maybe burn the church down. And you began to realize, listen, this is not about us. This is about you guys extending the kingdom and having an impact for the kingdom all over the country. Amen. It was because of their unbelief. They were afraid of possible destruction. This is indicated when they said, Master, care us not that we perish. Some of you may have been tempted to think like that. Lord, where were you? And why couldn't you put the fire out? The Lord was saying, listen, I, I'm going to change some things. and I'm going I'm to leave the past in the past. I'm taking you to a new place. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we don't really, we keep waiting for preachers up here to get better. I don't know. I, 58 years past. I don't know I'm going to get any better. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because if every one of you just brought one person next Sunday, we, 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 the tech would double. It's not about how good we preach. It's about how many people still believe that the king has one more move. And there are people that seem that, that are out there in the city that need to be up here, and we just keep waiting for them to come when the preacher gets better. The fact of the matter is, every single one of you could bring one person next week, and we call it revival. What are we waiting for then? Is God willing that none would perish? He's waiting on us. and He's waiting on us to overcome our stuff. He's willing to believe that he can heal. He's willing to believe that God can, can be with us even when we go through a trial, when we go through a tragedy, and he can come alongside us and make a way where there seems to be no way. 
What's your greatest fear? What's your greatest heartache? What is the greatest challenge that some of you have been facing, whether you're a teenager or whether you're, you've been around here for a while? What God's saying is, listen, you've got faith and trust are very similar words. Because when you have faith, you trust. And when you trust, you have faith. That's right. God is asking, do you trust? Somebody in this room right now could probably pay, pay for, write a check, and get the building built. But what are we waiting for? Well, we're waiting for you. You can spell one million O-N-E, M-I-L-I-O-N. Just write the check. Let's get it done. You say, well, how did you believe that? Because the king has one more move. Yes, you have. There is no limitations on God. He's not caught off by surprise. What he's simply yeah, trying yeah. to do is get his people positioned where they will simply trust him and believe him, do their part, and when everyone does their part, we get together and celebrate what God did. Thank you, Lord. The Lord wants us to focus upon and trust him rather than focus on the storm. You have to remember that the king, everybody say it one more time, the king has one more move. You can believe him to do as he says in his word, Psalm 37, verse 5, here's what it says. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Some of you, I know what you're thinking, well, Lord, it's, it's been a long road and I'm not getting any younger. The Bible says that one day to, the Lord, one day to us is a thousand years to the Lord. God can do it in a moment. Yes, he can. He can do it in 30 seconds. Listen, if one year to, to, to me is, is a thousand to the Lord, you've got to begin to remember that there is nothing impossible for God. Amen. But it's activating that faith. It's that belief that says the king has one more move. I'm not the end of my rope. I, the king has one more move. Thank you, Lord. Good Lord. Having faith will help you to trust. Romans 14, 23 says it this way. Whatever is not of faith is sin. So I always have to remember that the king has one more move. All of a sudden you begin to boil this down and you think if the Lord can part the Red Sea, can he get you to college? If the Lord can, can, can part the Red Sea, can he bring you a husband? See, the problem is he wants you to seek him first and not the husband first, because if you get the husband and you make him first, then that husband will never be able to meet any of your needs. Because they'll be temporary when God says, I want to satisfy you with the satisfaction that comes from me, and you're going to try to fill it with somebody else, it becomes an idol. And God's trying to get his people to realize if you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. So quit seeking all the stuff, seek him first, and you'll begin to trust in a way that you begin then, even through trial, even through pressure, even through challenges that God will make a way. You'll be able to say in your spirit, say in your mouth, the king has one more move. Good. Hebrews 11, 6 are told, uh, but without faith it's impossible to please him. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. How do you apply it to your life? How do you make sure this gets deep down on the inside of you? As I come up here already, we see somebody can say, we have nothing, everything is gone. I come up here and go, you've got a beautiful piece of property. Yes, what an amazing do. tent. You guys got four wheelers. You've got, you, you've got things. I don't know if you've always had them, but this situation has brought some other things forward. We've got grills and and and, and we've got hot tubs up in the in the church. I don't know about you. I've never had a hot tub in my church. And some of you think, well, I don't know if I should get baptized. Let me just tell you right now, you need to get baptized because the king has one more move. And when you move into the waters of baptism, God can break some things off of you. Take that uh, iniquity, break that cycle, as Pastor said, and put you on a rock and change your generation. Right. So don't ask the question, should I get baptized? Why aren't you getting baptized? Well, there you go. What's holding you back? What's keeping you down? Some of you are baptized as a baby because maybe there were some Catholics in you. I was baptized when I was a baby. I realized that uh, that was my parents' faith. That wasn't my faith. Thank God my parents tried to do the best they could. But guess what? When I came to Christ, I said, I'm going to get baptized. I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to believe deep in my heart, no matter what I face, that the king has one more move. Amen. Listen to this. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So what God's looking for is a people that when they go through stuff, 
immediately they began to think the king has one more move. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. He's going to do something in my marriage. He's going to do something in my finances. He's going to do something with my kids that are away from me. He's going to do something in my marriage. He's going to do something. Why? Because he is able. Yes. The Bible says more than able. Now this morning, I would say that all of us then can respond to that. All of us can respond by simply believing that the king is one more move. When you're at the end of your rope, when you think that you can't go any further, and you begin to say, the king, say it with me, the king has one more move, you begin to apply that to every situation in your life, and then you begin to anticipate. There was a young lady, there's a lady over here. I said, how are you? And she goes, blessed and highly favored. And she said, I came anticipating today. What does that mean? Anticipate. It means at any moment I can say the king has one more move. Where are you going to get the money for your gas tank? The king has one more move. Where are you going to get that new church building? The king has one more move. What are we going to do about this? The king has one more move. Every time you face a situation that seems impossible, God's people need to stand up and say, the king has one more move. Having faith, listen, will help you travel. I got saved when I was 18, and when Christ came into my life, he revealed himself to me in such a holy way that literally, I, I, at a young age, I said, I would die for this. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. This is a, that God could love someone like me. And I remember thinking to myself one time in prayer, a young guy came up to me who was teaching the Bible study. He said, Dave, here's what you need to do. Ask the Holy Spirit to shine his light in your heart. And I'm thinking, that's going to be awesome. But when he, when I asked that question, the Holy Spirit shined his light in my heart, but what he shined in my heart was not what I thought. I See, I was a legend in my own mind. I thought God was going to say, baby, I love you. You're amazing. Rather, what he showed me is you've got pride and arrogance. You've got selfishness and insecurities. But if you'll let me work on the inside of you, I'll begin to transform you from the inside out. And I begin to say, Lord, woe is me. I'm undone. I don't even know if I'm worthy now. And little defeat started coming in. And I remember thinking to myself, I can't do this. But God can do this. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. And he began to shine his light. And how many of you know God always heals what he reveals? If he reveals something in you, it's not because he's mad at you. He's wanting you to deal with it so that you can mature in that area. Certainly, we have heard the expression, I have come this way, uh, I've come by this uh, by faith. Faith, the faith way is the way of the trusting believer. So I've got to travel with faith my whole life, the good times and the bad times. Let me give you another story. I'll never forget the time. I was 34 years old. And uh, I got a call, and this gal says, I'm your sister. I said, my sister? All my family's here in Michigan. She's from California. She said, you have a biological father. See, for years, 34 years, I thought I was Italian. And I found that I had a biological father, she told me, in California. So I went from, hey, Paisan, in one moment, to American Indian the next, how? <laughs> it was something I, I couldn't, so I went to my mom, of course, mom, is this true? She says, I would have told you if you would ever would have asked. Well, how was I supposed to know? <laughs> and so listen to this, so I, I, I get this call, I talk to my biological father, he says, will you come out to California and meet us? And I talked to my wife, we're pastors at that time, and we prayed about it, felt like we were supposed to, so I decided to call up the church out in California. And it's a little country, rural church in the middle of no place, uh, uh, foothills of Yosemite National Park. I call up, there's a pastor, could I, I want to invite my family to the church, I've never met them before, could I come and say a couple words? And he says to me, Pastor, you'll love this, he says, I'm going fishing. He says, why don't you just take over the service? <laughs> I never met the guy in my life. So I tell my, my biological dad, I said, I'm coming to California, and we'll come and see you, and, but we're going to go to church on Sunday, so I'd like you to come. Well, he was, he was an alcoholic, uh, and he knew all the other alcoholics. 
he decided to invite all the alcoholics and all his neighbors and all his people, all his friends. So this little church that seats about, I don't know, 100 people was packed to about 200, 250 people. And so I get there and I give an altar call. The first one that comes to the Lord is my father. He comes to the altar and then my stepmom and sisters and brothers, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews. And so for the last 25 years, I've been going out there every year, more than one year. And because every time, it was like a mission. And more and more people started. And so now we own 80 acres out, out west. And uh, while we're doing that, we're taking people out on these uh, trips, mentoring trips, where we're helping people grow, take them to the mountains, and, uh, and uh, help them grow their relationship with God. You guys got to read for that stuff. All right, here we go. Here's what we're trying to say and do. Back this way. And then you'll have to switch with each other if you want to switch for size. I don't know what size these are. Pastor gives you the right size. Oh, almost hit somebody in the head. Hey, just, just say the kid has one more move and they hit you in the head, okay? All of a sudden, you begin to recognize that uh, God's at work, doing things, moving in ways. And so here I am. Listen, I, I, I lead my family to the Lord and... Now I've been taking teams of people to the mountains to go seek the Lord. And God is transforming people's lives. People getting healed. People getting set free. Because I'm taking them away from their cell phones. I'm taking them away from their, their comfortable places. And we're going to the mountains to seek the Lord. When people get done, they say, the king has one more move. Uh -huh. I came thinking one thing, and God's got another plan. Because when I get out of my plan and get into his plan, he can make a way when there seems to be no way. What are we trying to say this morning? When we really are believing the Lord and we're on this journey of trusting Him, you'll begin to discover that the problems that seem to want to overtake you and defeat you can be the very things that actually draw you closer to Him. I'm not saying let's go do stupid stuff so we can get closer. What I'm saying is stuff comes your way whether you want to or not. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I, I don't know how long I'm going to live. I don't know. I could be on a bus tomorrow and get hit by a car. I, none of us know how long we have. But what we do know is that God is looking for you and he's looking for me. To be part of a family. That when faced with trial and faced with trouble, we say together, the king has one more room. He's not done with you. He's not done with this church. He's not done with partners and friendships. It's going to be a new season, a new beginning. But you've got to begin to look at, the, look at life through his eyes, not through yours. When you begin to anticipate the inevitable, the supernatural power and life of God, you begin to set yourself and your family and set them apart. Because there's a lot of people today in our culture, a lot of people who are trying to do it in their own strength and their own power, their own way. And God's trying to get them to come over to the other side. Yes, amen. Will you, will you come over to the other side? Will you quit looking at the problems and begin to trust the Lord? Will you begin to see situations and faced with those situations, will you begin to say the king has one more move? He's got one more move for every single area of your life when he's saying, I want you to cross over to the other side. So I don't know. I, 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 I look at that empty spot back there and I just think to myself, the king has one more move. Right. And we're going to have some fun doing it. I remember going through COVID saying the king has one more move and people were getting mad at me. Anybody ever, did you guys go through some of that? No matter what you did, people were upset. If you wear a mask, uh, you're, you're, you're afraid. If you don't wear a mask, you're an idiot. You know? No matter what it was, it was, it was somebody always mad, somebody always frustrated, someone always had this. And we simply said, the king has one more move. We're not going to be afraid. We're going to face this head on and we're going to overcome it. And yet the challenge that I think that a lot of us face is you've got to remember this. Before Jesus comes again, the Bible says the sheep and the goats are not going to be separated. Don't be a goat. How do you tell the difference between goats and sheep? The sheep say the king has one more move. The goat says... The problem is bigger than my God. Now, I don't have to worry about separating. All I got to do is keep preaching the message of Jesus Christ and faith, and automatically some people will be attracted 
automatically some people will go. Sometimes I need to help them go because they're making too much of an effect on the sheep. Are you hearing me? God is at work in your church. He's at work in your life. But he, he operates. Listen, it's faith that pleases him. And he wants you to have faith on your whole journey. And the same faith you start out with when you're, when you're younger is the same faith you need at the end of the race. The largest harvest of souls is coming to planet Earth. Jesus is coming again. Yes. And he's looking, listen, for people who will say, the king has won our Lord. Father in the name of Jesus. We're praying right now for great faith to defeat the, to defeat the giants. To defeat those giants in our life that want to take us away from you, that want to take us away from your family. Lord, we need you. We need each other. And we're believing right now that there are people in this room who need to take a bold stand to be all in so that real, uh, real freedom requires real commitment. That we make a commitment today that say, listen, no matter what I face, no matter what I go through, I'm going to stand in faith, yes. believing that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And so, Father, we're anticipating right now. How many people are praying or thinking right now that you want to get baptized this morning? The first thing that needs to happen is you have to have faith because if you just go get wet in the hot tub, it's not going to do anything for you. But if you go to in faith, you're going in faith to the waters of baptism. There's going to be two things that happen. Number one, it'll be an outward sign and it'll be an inner work. The inner work transforms and changes. If you don't have that part, you're just getting wet. Some of you have been stubborn. You say, I'm not getting baptized. I don't need to do that nonsense. I'm not going to do that in front of people. And I just say the king has one more move. And he can soften your heart and tell you today you need to make that move. There's some people in this room right now that need to be healed. And like our sister said, you haven't been willing to come forward. I'll just keep it private. I'm a private person. I don't tell anybody. But God's saying, I need you to get out of the boat. You'll never know if you'll walk on the water unless you get out of the boat. Are you hearing me? How many people this morning would say, Pastor, I... I need to make a commitment to Christ. This may be for the first time. You've known about your head your whole life, but it's not just about your head. It's about that 18 inches from your head to your heart. How many would say this morning, I want to make a, a commitment to Christ for the first time? Just put your hand up real quickly if that's you. Anybody else in here? I see a hand right there. Anybody else? Okay, let's thank the Lord for this young lady who raised her hand over here. Can you do that? And here's what we're going to do. If you receive Christ today, I, I'm going to put a little pressure on you because pastor doesn't have to have you back ever, right? I can put the pressure on you. It's time for you to get baptized. Why not do it today? Yeah. Let's just say yes to Christ, and that means following in the waters of baptism because here's what's going to happen. Uh, let me, can you come up here real quick, Jamie? Pastor Jamie. Here's what I'd like to do real quickly. Most people don't understand this. Go turn around. I'm going to grab the back of the belt, okay? I'm going to grab that belt. Now watch this. This is pretty powerful. He wants to walk and go after God, right? But something's holding him back. Something's keeping him from moving forward. And what God does in the waters of baptism, watch this. He cuts that enmity, that built-in resistance that holds you back. He's going to bring you freedom by going in the waters of baptism. All of a sudden, you go, why are all of us getting baptized? Well, maybe all of you have been baptized. You don't need to do it again. But if you haven't been baptized, that's what we're trying to break off of you. That resistance. God wants to give you freedom to be able to go into the waters of baptism. So how am I going to do that? Well, don't worry about it. I, I, one lady got baptized in a wedding dress. Think about that. Well, i got to have all the conditions right. Hey, we've got towels. We've got t-shirts. We've got whatever it takes. You do your part. So we had this morning, a couple of them said yes to Christ. How about you? How many of you have been looking at your problem? Let's be honest. Looking at your problems more than you've been trusting what God has for you. Anybody? Thank you for being honest. I just think that's it's it's reality. Yeah. And God can handle reality. He just wants you to be honest with Him because He wants to be able to move you from where you are to where He wants you to go. That you would have that deep confidence on the inside that no matter what you are facing, you remember that the King has one more. Can you give me a little feedback this morning? What did you hear this morning? What stood out to you? What could you take? The king has one more move. That's, that's, 
I guess that fit in perfectly. Somebody else in this section. That's that section. How about that section right back here? The king has one more pastor. I think they're getting it. I think they got it, Pastor. How about this section right here? The king has one more move. How about this section over here? Back over there? Listen, one more time together. The king has one more move. God bless you. We love and appreciate you, Pastor. Back over to you. sermon for a little while. He has one more move. And uh, we, we want to take the opportunity, if you want to be baptized, we want uh, those that signed up and those who didn't sign up and would like to. And um, I want to say, well, why do we do this as part of our service? Because we are welcoming people into the same experience that we've had. Amen. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. He didn't say repent and then I'll tell you what to do. He said, repent and be baptized. Some people think it's optional equipment, but the truth of the matter is, is you can't be obedient to the very first thing you do as a Christian unless you're baptized. So we want to give opportunity to people and if they've already missed that, we want them to re return to that so that they can be able to do that. So um, I know, Tasha, you were going to be baptized, right? If there's, if you can come on over here, and we'll prepare to baptize you. Is there, were there others that were planning on being baptized or you would like to? Because if you do, we want to make sure. That... Yep. They've, got, they've got shorts and shirts. So if you don't, go ahead and. See April right back there, and she'll help you. Hey. And that's April. She says, hey. All right. Can you come here? All right, this is Tasha. And um, I'm going to give her an opportunity to just kind of share why she wants to be baptized and what God's done in her heart. So this is going to be an experience. We're going to have a great time. I'm hoping it's on video so that they can see it. Because it might be wild. Go ahead and step on in there. I know it's kind of tall there, right? Okay. This is a wonderful thing. I was baptized in the Grand River in Diamonddale, Michigan, and it was nasty. <laughs> but I will never forget it because it was the day that the church gathered around me, and it was the day that they recognized that Jesus had done something in my heart. Yes. Amen? So, Tasha... Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So, yeah. so your nose like that, and your arm across here. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Oh, she's coming. Okay. All right. I think.
think it's pretty cool that a church would provide you with shirt and shorts to be able to make baptize, right? It's because we don't want anybody to miss it. Come on out. All right, tell everybody your name. My name's Hope. Isn't that a great name? Her name is Hope. And, uh, and what has Jesus done in your heart? He helped me through a lot of rough times. I was with my dad, and he really did some life suffering. But Jesus got me through it. Yes. Yeah. And, and you want to serve him all the rest of your life? Yes, I do. Jesus loves you, this I know. All right, Hope. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and step in there. It's, it's slippery, but it's warm, isn't it? someone else changing to be baptized. Amen? <laughs> Baptism is one of the great um, privileges that uh, pastors have. And uh, many times when we have parents whose young children are coming to that point of baptism, we have the parents baptize them. Um, we've had times when couples where they had come to faith in Christ, and we have couples that we baptize together yeah. at the same time. You know, they can't stay in the hot tub afterwards. It <laughs> might be used for something else. So, but um, we're uh, we're just excited about the idea that people are being baptized and making yeah. that kind of Amen. connection and commitment. Okay. All right. Do you guys know this young lady? Okay. Tell them your name. Jenna Marco. This is my granddaughter. And uh, she is being baptized today. And her dad's going to help me do that. And um, why are you being baptized? Because God showed me that I can pray for people. And I didn't know I could do that before. All right. So you're going to serve Jesus all your life. And you're going to pray for people that they're healed? Yes. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Go ahead and step in. Decision that you want to be baptized, 
jointly churches in the park on the 14th in the afternoon and called all. We're going to be down at the lake baptizing people. And uh, because, because when we do that, we are just following the directions of our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. That's a powerful thing. Now, um, we're going to pray dismissal over this part, and then I assume somebody's giving directions, and we're going to turn this place into a place where people can eat, okay? So, um, get ready. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for this day. We thank you that you have one more move. We're, we're thankful, Lord, that no matter what circumstance or situation we find ourselves in, it's never the final moment because you have one more move. We're thankful for that, Lord. And we're thankful for the move that these three young ladies took today. They took a move, Lord, in your direction. And they have chosen to follow a king who always has one more move. We pray for your blessings upon everyone that is here today. We pray, Lord, that you keep them by your grace and your power. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.